B-Pod Studios. If you've ever asked yourself the question, what are the odds? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tangiers Hotel proudly presents the Bankroll Bunch. With the Sasha Seminoff Orchestra. Dan Lipschitz, Kendra Middleton. And the Sam Rock Dean Dancers. The Bankroll Bunch with Dan Lipschitz and Kendra Middleton. We are Touch and Hardy. This hour of our show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. The bankroll bunch is Danny Livshatz, Kendra Middleton, or Middleton. The bankroll bunch is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Kendra is already uh, taking uh, pictures of Hardy's balloon animal that he made yesterday. Because she has to, you know what she's doing? She's pirating and bastardizing our content and making it her own. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it sounds right. You do that to me every week. You just took an entire segment to talk about how I make my protein shake. Oh, Lord. But we, we had John. I, I mean, I'm just saying, though. We were promoting, and you could say we were promoting. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. We I forgot about that. Kendra, now Dan, you give your opinion yeah. since you guys are a team. Oh yeah. So Kendra was in the bathroom after your show, oh, boy. on a Saturday, room. a bathroom with a toilet, and she <laughs> went into the bathroom with the toilet, and she started on camera mixing up this uh, milky white potion. I saw, I saw the video. Okay. Yep. Shake, shake, shake. And then she consumed it in the very place where people poo. It's disgusting. (laughs) Thank you, Dan. You want to know what's crazy? I have more milk and protein powder in my purse to make another one. Sure, you do. (laughs) You can even ask Mike Lockhart to look because it's right there. It's okay. Are you going to make another one today? (laughs) Yeah. In defiance. Yes. And you're going to do it on camera? Absolutely. Every 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 opportunity I get until the day I die. Yes. Just you should do it in the stall. Okay. Yeah. And like in rest the in rest the, the or the, the toilet paper yeah. like little window sill they have right on top of the toilet paper. There. How yeah. about this, John? Ooh. How about on the seat? Perfect. Just no. make it on what the seat. What if I sat in the toilet? Well, that's uh-huh. a whole that's a whole uh-huh. fetish type uh-huh. of thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't do that. <laughs> you got enough problems on. Have you guys ever even been in the locker rooms down there? They're they're pretty nice. I don't doubt it, no, but no, I, no, it's, it's one either. thing to go in there, and it's another thing to... Uh, I understand you are the, the most in shape out of all of us. Oh, no... here we go. What? I just said you're the most in shape out of all of us. Yeah. You've been in the locker room. Yeah. There's no question about it. It really takes a lot of uh, gut and grits to go down to the locker room on the uh, the main floor. It does take a lot of uh, gut and grits, though, to be able to hold down something that you consumed in a place where they make duties. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. I'm proud of you. Thank I you. like that. Every week you should be like, now I'm doing something in the bathroom. I'm yeah. making yeah. stuff in the bathroom. Yeah. You, you should make like stir fry. Pasta. <laughs> Who's the it's, dude who made like the shrimp oh, thing the shrimp on the airplane? Thing on the airplane. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all Kendra now. What was what did the guy do on the airplane? He made like some sort of like... Shrimp. Bathroom, bathroom shrimp, oh, shrimp no, snappy bathroom dish. Shrimp? He, I, and, and, and Dan, I'm glad you you saw it. I don't believe it. I don't believe you could lock yourself into an airplane bathroom for that long. And he brought on board, like, this battery-operated water heater and, like, put water in the airplane bathroom sink and boiled shrimp in it and all this stuff and then took it back to his seat and ate a bunch of shrimp. I'm like, you know, too many edits in that video. I don't believe he actually did it, but I I hope he didn't. The very idea was was enough. He stole it from Kendra. (laughs) I mean, he just took it to the next logical step. Right. All right, so we are interested in your Super Bowl bets. I, I hope you have a lot, but but first, obviously, we keep you for two segments because you come all the way up here. But uh, Kendra, can you explain to the people what you did on Saturday evening? Uh, I went to oh, thank you to the Glitter Boys. By the way, I went to their prom. They threw an '80s themed prom. They sold out Roadrunner. It was super fun. Oh, who'd okay. you go with? Uh, I went with like. 
eight of my friends. Nah, that's no fun. We're the Glitter Boys. Is this something I'm supposed they to know? They sent me a, a, a nice tracksuit, though. So. They're affiliated with the Crips. <laughs> <laughs> The Latin Kings and them are beefing pretty hard. <laughs> Can I make odds with the Latin Kings for me? Anyone want to take that back? Uh, oh, 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 it, it's a trillion to one, but <laughs> they don't stand a chance. But um, glitter boy. So I, uh, Hardy. Everyone follows you on Instagram. Hardy had seen this, and Hardy had an idea since you went to an '80s prom, Kendra. Yes. yes. What is that idea, Hardy? Well, obviously, Kendra is a huge fan of the 80s. No one goes to an 80s prom unless they're very much immersed <laughs> yeah. themselves oh, in boy. 80s culture. <laughs> Nothing to do with online content at all. She was just there for the oh, music boy. and the fun. Yeah, well, because she loves the 80s. Now, right. I, I do question whether or not you're truly into it because, to me, this would be like... This being like Fred or, or me going to like a '60s or a '70s prom, or Wallet going to a '40s themed prom. Yeah, yeah, like it's just you don't love to go thrift shopping and get dressed and put on blue eyeliner, Hardy. You must love the '80s to the extent that we decided we would quiz you on some '80s trivia and see how you oh, actually do. Okay. But if the problem you... is, Kendra, if we go out there and do all that, what you just said, then the cribs come after us, <laughs> right? Because now we've identified as the glitter boys, right? All right, so uh, it's 2024, man. I'm just saying that if there's gang warfare, I want to be on, you know, I, I want to be on pacifist. All right, so here's the deal. Hardy said if there was, like, a prom that was, like, a 60s prom, 80s. When were you born? 96. 96 to 75. So, yeah, so, okay, same deal, 60s. But I was aware of, like, what happened in the 60s because, believe me, they insisted on it. The oh, people of the 60s, you never the, heard anything like The baby like it. boomers would not let oh, you not Oh, they would not, not shut up. They will still not shut up about it. There's got to be Woodstocks all the time. I mean, they're really going to kick out of themselves. All right. But so I, if you would have played me stuff from the 60s, I would have been like, all right, cool. Like, I like I know all this stuff pretty sure. much. I mean, because it exists in the, like, just because something happened before you were born doesn't mean that you should be, or necessarily that you'd be ignorant toward it because we live in a society where there is history. Yes. Um, so, Kendra, you must know a lot about the 80s. If you went through all this, so we're going to uh, play you a few things from the 80s. You have to identify uh, either the artist or the film or whatever. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Okay, we're going to start with this song. You need to identify can the... Can I do the name of the song? Does that count? You it can... doesn't matter. Whatever you can do. Okay, perfect. Okay. We, we've set the bar very low. All right. Start... I'm glad. Start well, with... unless they say the name of the song. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would appreciate both artist and title for this one. Uh, I know the song's under pressure. Okay. Uh, I know the words. I don't know who sings it. That's good enough for me. That's better than I thought. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I that know why you did that. I know why you did that, because you thought she was going to say Ice Ice Baby. I thought she was going to get it confused with this. I know. Uh, it's Vanilla Ice. Oh, it is different. Yo, it's the I always thought that he was kidding. Is this the it 80s? Kick it. No, this is, Ice it Ice is Baby is like the that. 80s. That's 90s, right? 90s, right. Yeah, uh, Vanilla that, Ice is 90s. Did I just get you at your own game? No. Uh, Vanilla Ice came out in 1990, so it was like right on the cusp. Like you call yourself a cusp millennial, that would be on the cusp of uh, 80s, 90s. And Under Pressure is actually barely 80s, 81 for this. So this is just quiz Kendra Hour. It's not even really like... All right, very good. You're one for one. Well, okay. you went to the Glitter Boys, and yeah. the Glitter Boys demand a little bit of knowledge about what's going on okay. at their affairs. Yeah. Uh, would you please identify the movie that this comes from? Somebody calls my mama a whore. <laughs> is she? <laughs> <laughs> Movies are the one thing I have no idea. I have no idea what that is. I, I know uh, this one. All right, I'll give you. I'll, I'll make it easier for you. First of all, she didn't get it, so that's wrong. Dude, <laughs> wide. That's right. <laughs> but I'll give you another clip from the same movie. He's good. He's real good. The name is Dollar. Oh, I have no idea. You still don't the know? The name is Dalton. There's pool balls breaking. They're in a kind of house. A By the side of the road. Nope. They're in a house by the side of the road. They're in a, a house by the side of the road. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of that. 
<laughs> oh, I've we, never uh, even heard of that. Moon Zappa. That's right. Uh, Roadhouse. Dated, dated uh, Mark Marin. Moon we, Zappa. Oh, uh, Moon Unit Zappa. Moon Unit Zappa. Yes. Who did uh, Valley did Girl. you know this? Oh. Yes, oh. I did. Okay. Yes. Roadhouse. They make it well, when you said it was a house by the road, yeah. what kind of house is that? I think Dan, anyone would have really figured that out. Right, Probably. Good. We, we have to make this super easy now. All right. Identify this person, please, Kendra. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Either person. I have no idea. Oh, all right. Oh, you went to, you're a college graduate. <laughs> yeah. All right. Either person. The person, who who is Gorbachev? I have no idea. Kendra. <laughs> what? Kendra, you went to college SEC. and graduated. Yeah. SEC no, for but two she years. Graduated hey, no, from I New graduated Hampshire. from UNH. Thank you. She graduated you can't from UNH. Throw, you can only throw two years of Alabama schooling on me. All right. Here we go again. Mr. Gorbachev. I have no idea. Tear down okay. this wall. The person. The president. Speak, the per, okay. Stop. That's Dan, it. That's Dan, it. That's Dan, it. Dan, 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 Come on. Dan, Dan. All right. So it was a president during the 80s. Okay, so in the eighties there were two. two in the eighties there were there two, are people two definitely presidents. screaming at their radio right now. Uh, there were two presidents in, in the eighties. There yes. was two presidents in the eighties. It's one of the presidents and the president that know. was the longest in the eighties. I don't know. Uh, he's old. Alzheimer's. Uh, All of them. Don't say. N- <laughs> Touche. <laughs> oh. He uh, like d- Bill just Maher say no. Here. <laughs> I know. I mean, Kendra, careful. Uh, it's just like having the capital steps in here. He was a pre- he was a two term president in the eighties. Dude, had a- I wasn't even. Can I say th- you might have to dump this? I don't know. I wasn't even like a swimmer at the time. I don't know. Oh, dump that. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that was over the line. He was a. Two- I don't know. Okay. No. 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 Two term president. <sighs> okay. You okay, said hang, that hang, six hang, times hang, and hang it's on. not helping me. J- his wife <laughs> had the campaign. Just say no. She was on different strokes. I don't know, dude. All right. Donald <laughs> Fagan, not Donald <laughs> Fagan, but I don't even know. Right. Ry- Donald Fagan rhymes with Ronald Reagan. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Now he's saying. Now, Gorbachev <laughs> at the time was the enemy, and he was... Okay, so Gorbachev was the I didn't know head... that I was coming in for a history lesson. No, no, it will end after this. Don't don't be sore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Gorbachev, so Ronald Reagan is, is steamed at Gorbachev, who is the head of what U.S. adversary? I don't know. I don't know. They're I now known as that. Russia. Okay. They're they're now known as Russia. Okay. Before they were Russia, they were called the Soviet Union. Ah! Yeah. Mikhail Gorbachev. I only know that because I played a lot of Goldeneye on my Nintendo 64. Oh my all right. God. Is there, is there, however you get there. Is that's there, all that matters. Is there any chance he can identify the restaurant being promoted in this commercial? It certainly is a big bun. It's a very big bun. Big fluffy bun. It's a very big fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some handbag. I'm going to be honest. I don't know that commercial. I, I you know this. where's the beef? I, I don't know the commercial, no. Is you don't know the easy? tagline, where's the beef? No, I do. I'm saying I would, I would never know oh, this from okay. the commercial. I've never. Barf me out. Dad knew the spoon. Right. She wouldn't know that, and I don't blame her for not knowing that. That's that's when. It was just a big deal. For Wendy's. When we were, when I yeah. was, I, I wasn't even in elementary school then. John was actually part of the ad campaign. He was the <laughs> husband of the woman who said, where's the beef? <laughs> she did get uh, under pressure, though. I'm, I'm very impressed and you that know, she didn't go ice ice baby. And you know the the lady uh, who did the Where's the Beef commercials, uh, terrible run of luck with money, ended up in pornography. Oh, yeah. Double kill. All right, very good. All right, uh, Kendra and Dana here. Wait. I can't wait for the dumb blonde jokes. You're not even blonde. What? No, she is. Are you joking? She's you like, have red hair. No, it's dark blonde. That's not red? I have never. You are the only person that's ever said that to me in my entire life. I always thought you were a ginger Rooney. Yeah. Wow. Did you just? Hey, hey I don't Kendra. I could say that. Why was ginger? The, I thought you were a ginger. What is a Rooney? I have to, what the Kendra, hell? why was the blonde staring at the can of frozen orange juice? Why? It said concentrate. Nice. <laughs> No one said you were dumb, Kendra. Oh, that. Oh, I'm gonna get roasted for that. 
As opposed to when? That we don't get killed. It's true. Go read my crap. You think everyone's the fan of mine? It's true. All right, here we go. It's the it's the it's the price of greatness, Kendra. Jealousy. All right, uh, here we go. When we come back, people are interested. They want to know what to bet on in the Super Bowl. No one cares about it, so everyone needs to know what to bet on so they'll care. So you have a big responsibility. The bankroll bunch coming right up. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Country music has so many generous artists who always seem to jump in to help those in need. We're spotlighting five who lead by example and lend a helping hand to charitable causes. See who made our list when you text GIVE to 45911. Text GIVE to 45911 and read all about it right now on BackstageCountry.com. Toucher and Hardy on the Sports Hub. Toucher and Hardy, the Bank World Bunch is in studio. It's Danny Livshatz, Kendra Middleton, and I don't know if you guys are aware. By the way, they are they are doing live reads during our show now. I heard that. Yeah. They're doing it right here. They're taking money out of our pockets. All right. So here's the deal is uh, everyone loves the Super Bowl. Hardy especially is all fired up about it. Oh, biggest day of my life. Super Bowl all day. Three days. Never leave the couch. Just give me all the content. What are you guys doing for the Super Bowl? Do you, do you do you bother with any of the pregame stuff? No, no, I, I don't watch the halftime. What do you guys do? Uh, <laughs> what are you guys doing for the Super Bowl? Uh, I go to my buddy's place every year. I have never lost a uh, Super Bowl bet at his place, so I'm just keeping up tradition until oh. I lose. So I mean, like the side of my Super Bowl bet. Yeah, bet yeah, yeah. I, I can go. Uh, June and Honey is making me a charcuterie board. I'm ordering baked wings from Hooters, and I'm hanging out with like 10 or 12 people. You can come if you want. Thank you. Oh, look at you. You're very sweet. Thank yep. you, Kendra. See, I wasn't excited for the Super Bowl, but then I realized, wait, I could get a charcuterie board. Yeah, I know. And now, we should all do now that. Now I am actually looking forward to the Super I Bowl. I am going to defend <laughs> I'm going to defend Kendra and say I would love a charcuterie board. You because want mixed I, cheeses, really? I will not have the cheeses, but I will have the meats. Will you have the what dry... about pickles? I will have the pickles. Will you have the dry crackers that no, nobody wants? I That's do. I put the Ritz. I put the the prosciutto on the cracker. Ugh. Huh? I thought that was an unfair shot at Kendra. <laughs> I would have always taking cheap button. shots at me, but I you just... never notice. You know why? I, I notice him like thirty seconds afterwards. I'm like, damn, that was kind of a no, smack. By you know why? Because he's a dick. Genius <laughs> of Hardy. He does it real subtle. You know why? To think about it afterwards. It's like, and I'm sick of it because every show, it's like, how do you work with that guy? Right. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get him fired. <laughs> the charcuterie board, to me, it looks nice. It looks so much nicer than it actually is to consume. Because I'm with Fred. I don't do like a ton of cheese. I don't do any unmelted cheese. Oh, thank you. You That's- don't like adult Lunchables? No. 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 Ah. But, you know, and that always uh, bothers women. Like every woman. Every woman, wife, girls, anyone, like when you're like, yeah, I don't want like any cheese. They're like, what? We're like, what the hell is wrong? With you? you guys don't know about girl dinner, do you? What's no, girl dinner? Uh, no, what I do that? know because okay. I witnessed it in my house. I would say at least three nights a week, like the kids and I will be having actual meals of food. And uh, here comes my wife with just, you know, like some specialty cheese and yeah. some crackers and yep. some other girl things. Dinner. I'm like, what do you, what, that's not dinner. No. Raccoon snack. Having. Yeah. Ugh. See, my son would be more likely to eat that with his mom than my daughter would. Than my daughter and I would have to go fend our, for ourselves. Yeah, all right. Uh, all right. So here we go. The Super Bowl is coming. Uh, I don't care who wins it all. It doesn't. Because uh, you know why? Because I hate Jason Kelsey. I hate Travis Kelsey. Who do you like? Name for one dollar. Name a player in the Super Bowl that you like. <laughs> I don't mind Patrick Mahomes. Uh, That's I mean, not a like. Uh, who do I like? Yeah. More than a friend? No. Well, I mean... <laughs> no, who do I what like? What if we kissed at the Super Bowl? Insert your player here. Fred and who? Who would I kiss at the Super Bowl? Yes. Um, 
I think Shanahan would be mean afterwards. <laughs> uh Probably Debo Samuel. All right, so because he would Debo. There you yeah, have yeah. it. Yeah, all right. There's so his player. yeah, Debo Samuel. All right. So who are you? Uh, what are some prop bets? Yes, give us the props. Um, I have been saying this for probably two weeks now. I took it when it came out. Travis Kelsey for an anytime touchdown. The odds are not as good as they were on DraftKings. They're currently minus one ten. I still like that. Oh. Um, that's probably one of my favorite plays, just because I I know that Dan has a uh, MVP pick that he likes but I, I feel like it's going to be Travis Kelsey something in this game like it has to be so that's that's what I'm rocking with yeah I mean I do think that Kelsey will have an advantage in MVP betting if you think the if you think the Chiefs are going to win I mean Kelsey it has Kelsey has a good game he's going to win the MVP I mean it's it's going to happen Kelsey will win not yeah. why, why not Mahomes I, well because so put it like this uh the fan vote actually represents about 20 percent of the vote for MVP I didn't so even know that. Kelsey will basically immediately have 20% of the vote. See, so if I, he has a good game. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. When I think of any time touchdown, though, I think of a of a person, and I, I like the odds on it. I still like him at minus 110, but I think of somebody who could score in at least two ways. Kelsey is only going to score a touchdown one way. Yeah, it's just the Super Bowl, and outside of their run game, he's kind of their only reliable option, and I think in a Super Bowl is when you have to go to your best option, and he has tried and true – they want. I mean, like, I I just don't see Patrick Mahomes not throwing a touchdown to Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl. Yeah, okay. they've been they've been super ineffective running the ball in the red zone. Actually, they, a lot of people have been betting the the Chiefs no uh, no rushing touchdown in game, which is like one fifty ish. I think it's down like one twenty ish, one ten ish now. Like I, that has been a pretty sharp bet. There was actually a well, one of the guys, a, a very sharp guy, gave it out yesterday publicly. I think that's why the movement on it, but. There, I mean that that has been a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty overwhelming bet. Again, a lot, a lot of these props have moved pretty heavily. At this point, it's been like you know a week and a half now, so a lot of these props moved. Especially yesterday, there was a lot of movement in the uh, in the market. So, I mean, you're going to see a lot of this stuff be a little bit, uh, a little bit different. I, I have a long shot if you want one. Um, it did hit a couple years ago. I gave it out. Uh, Couple of years ago, I'll give it out again, but it's basically any uh, any non quarterback throw a touchdown. So Mixon threw a touchdown a couple of years ago in uh, the Super Bowl against the Rams. Uh, he threw a, a I, I honestly don't remember who caught it for for Cincy, but he threw that one again. The one both these coaches extremely. What's, what's the what's the number on thirty five to one? Oof. So it's at FanDuel. It's at FanDuel only at that at, at those odds. There, it's like nine to one other places, but FanDuel thirty five <laughs> to one. You know, I had a fat guy touchdown one year, and what and something like it almost happened, or something like that. It was like dropped. If that guy touched that eighty five to one this year, so yeah. around around those odds too. I actually did play that one small just like for for kicks, uh, yeah. Because I, you know, I think you have to, but you have two of the more like creative offensive minds in the game going up against each other, and one of the things they have not done a lot is they have not taken the ball either out of Purdy's hands or out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. Um, I think that could change with the way Purdy has played, especially in the past couple weeks. I do think there's a legitimate possibility of someone else throwing a pass there on that on that San Francisco side. And the way Kansas City has been very stagnant offensively, especially for certain periods of time. I mean, they, they run that wildcat too. They they do. I mean, they they have to do something different. They yeah. they're going to have to start doing something a little bit. They're going to have to be aggressive in this game if they want to win. I just the the. For me, game script says Niners run the football f- to win. I mean, the fact Baltimore didn't run at all on Kansas City and and you know still almost won the game. I, I think Niners run the football. Either I think Mitchell and and Christian McCaffrey probably get a decent amount of carries in this game. So it's I mean it's going to be one of those games. You just have to follow the game script and, and kind of what you think is going to happen and, and kind of let the props from there. Yeah, my other two big plays, I, I think the Super Bowl is a time that I prefer to, like, I think the saying is, like, keep it simple, stupid. I think that that's, like, the thing to do yeah, with hey, the Super hey, Bowl. Stop. I know that people like to, you know, get involved in the coin flip and whatever. I would rather just focus on a couple props that I really like, especially this year. I feel like they're not as great this year. No, um, so I am rocking with pretty big Brock Purdy under 31 and a half pass attempts. He has done this in 13 of his last 15 games. The Chiefs defensive line's a bit banged up. Um, so I think, like Dan said, it's Christian McCaffrey or nobody. Like I said, with the Travis Kelsey thing, you go with your best players in the Super Bowl. That's their best option to win this game. Um, and I also have the Chiefs money line. I know that there's a lot of money on the Chiefs and Vegas doesn't really lose in the Super Bowl often. But if I'm going to go down with Patrick Mahomes as an underdog, so be it. I'm not going to go down with anybody else. Defense and Patrick Mahomes, I agree with you. Go ahead. Uh, I gave out yesterday a uh, team that had the longest punt return, um, Kansas City, in the game. 
Basically, you take a look at the two special teams units. Uh, I mean, statistically, the return game for the Niners has been very uh, non-aggressive, I guess is the way I would put it. They have Ray Ray, Ray McLeod is the guy who really, uh, you know, fields all the punts there. And they basically have not been letting him, you know, return very much. He's been calling fair catches very aggressively there. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I don't really love the return game for the Niners. They're both top 10 coverage uh, coverage units in actual special teams. So they're both fantastic coverage units. Kansas City actually is returning the ball, you know, mildly well on punts this year, even with Kadarius Tony, who probably won't be the one who gets it. Uh, it's probably going to be a couple of the other guys, Richie James especially. Um, but, I mean, again, they're they're still far more aggressive in their actual punt returns. Longest punt return to me is, is my, I think it's like minus 110 right now availability. I'd point that one up to around minus 140-ish, minus 145 would probably be my absolute max. Uh, but to me, minus 110, there are still available out there uh, for Chiefs' longest punt return. I really like that one. Um, and then for uh, longest punt return under 17 and a half yards, as I said, just, uh, you know, again, not aggressive side for San Francisco, two top 10 punt coverage units. And again, you know, you're you're really expecting maybe Richie James to, you know, to potentially break one. But I, I just I don't see it again. The Niners have a very, very strong punt coverage return uh, team in both. Again, both units top 10. So there's that. And then if you want one more special teams on opening kick. Uh, to not be a touchback, this is one that's kind of played out every year. The price on them is is just mispriced still. It did get it did get moved yesterday, but still plus two fifty out there in market for to it for the opening kick to not be a touchback. Again, it's just it's just mispriced. Uh, you know, the last thirty Super Bowls, it's twenty six and four to the not touchback. They use the ball. I don't remember you guys talking. You know, listening to the Pat McAfee show. I'm sure you guys played it a couple of years ago. Uh, in the Rams game where they were talking about the ball that they used to open the game. It's, you know, hard as an effing rock, I think is that was how he put it, which is true. They use a commemorative football for that opening kick. Um, I, again, just plus 250 seems like a, a, an incredible. Wait, so it is a touchback or it's not a touchback? Not, not a touchback. Not a touchback. Not you want to play not a touchback. Not a touchback, plus 250, yeah. Okay. Um, and who do you like in the game, Dan? Kendra likes Kansas City. I have not taken a side yet. Like I've not bet a side. Sure. Uh, I I lean San Francisco, but I have right. not I have not bet a side. I I like the under. So so far I've played the under forty uh forty seven and a half and forty eight has been, you know, the thing I primarily played, but I if I'm gonna play a side, it's gonna be San Francisco. How do you feel about uh my yearly annual whether it makes sense or not, will there be an overtime bet? Yeah, I mean there was a real weird did you guys see the Schefter tweet the other day? No. There was a, a Schefter tweet um, basically said, like, the CBS executive said it's going to be their first double overtime game, which is really weird to kind of put out there. He said, yep, it's going to be our first double overtime Super Bowl game. Ooh, I wish they were a prop which, on double overtime. Which, I mean, to me, makes is very strange to even say something like that. Like, yeah, it, but I mean, it sounds like you're, like, telling everyone the game is going to double overtime. Yeah, but a two-and-a-half-point spread and, you know, the two teams that are not necessarily wowing anybody with their offense right now, I could I could definitely see overtime. And the, the odds um, against it this year are a little lower than in years past. It's like at uh, 1,100 or... Let's see. What did I get it? At? I think the best price I saw was like fourteen to one for overtime. Oh, that's market. good. I got it. I think closer to eleven and a half. Yeah, but again, I, I think the the normal standard price in market right now is like ten to one, nine to one, yeah, maybe yeah. eleven to one. Yeah. So I, I think fourteen to one was the best price I saw after shopping like a bunch of different places. I, I didn't bet it again. I, it's so hard to kind of like you know to bet on that stuff. Bet on the safety. Bet on the overtime. Like you're just. You're really just taking an absolute guess oh, yeah. uh, on something well, that's, that guy, you know, that, a minus EV bet. Do you remember that guy years ago? It's like the first score of the game will be a safety, and he was he was showing off his ticket, and it was it was an impressive win, but the odds on it were, like, stupid, not high enough. Right. Like, if I'm yeah. going to put $100 on the safety being the first score of the game, I want a minimum 1,000 to 1. How many yeah. times has that happened? Yeah, but $100 to you me, me is nothing. Twice. Yeah, it's like chump change. I'll just I'll burn it in my hand right now. All right, there you go. I mean, a hundred Hardy. <laughs> I'll brush my teeth with a hundred, mm. and then I'll get Sal Manila. Right, because it's going to count. People handle that stuff. All right, Dan. No need to pay attention. What? What? I'm ending the segment, which oh. means it's time to <laughs> play. He's not looking at me. There's a sound that it goes with Well, it. his That's name's it. Dan, too, so I was like, uh... I, yeah, I thought, I thought he was no, Dan at, was just having a conversation. He was, was yelling at, at lift shots. I'm no, like, no. oh, boy. I wasn't yelling at anyone. 
All right. It is the Bankroll Bunch. They are on live 7 to 9 on Saturdays. Uh, you can wa- listen to the Over Under 98.5 podcast with Dan Livshets and Joe Murray and Kendra Middleton. How can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Kendra Middleton to watch me drinking bathroom protein shakes on Twitter at Kenny with an I Middleton. Dan, where can people find you? They can find me on Twitter at Dan Lipschatz. It's a very, very fun time to be on my Twitter, I promise you. Kendra, are you going down there now to make I sure. I'm going stuff? to lift first, but then, yes, I will have my protein shake. Mm. Do you want to do it in the men's bathroom? We could have Wallach... Uh, stand guard and you could really break the internet yeah sure i don't care you don't want to make anything in the men's bathroom it's I, absolutely disgusting yeah, even at also, five in the morning it's it, would, disgusting. it would not be a men's bathroom it would be the men's locker room no no i'm saying the men's bathroom oh no like right up locker the hall rooms only oh. okay. there's still a toilet in there kendra i don't know i mean it's tomato tomato all right well thanks guys i hope you enjoy the super bowl kendra, let me know if you want to come over for charcuterie and hooters i'm coming over Okay. I'm coming over with a big bag of pills. All right. (laughs) Hell yeah. All right. (laughs) All right. It's ketamine for everyone. Cool. All right. Uh, We will uh, be back. Thank you, uh, people. Uh, Here are the headlines. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Wondering who made our list of the top five all-time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. Ta-da! With Toucher and Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub. This hour of Toucher and Hardy is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Coming up at 8 o'clock, I had a friend in Vegas, and uh, he did something for us that we will have for you. No thanks to NBC Sports Boston. I'm ruining it. They didn't ruin anything, but it, it's not helping out. Uh, so you, you go to the Super Bowl, and I got to hand it, we were talking about this after the show one of these days, is that... Um, Boomer Eisen used to do Boomer and Carlton. Now he does Boomer and Geo, the number one Barrett Sports Media mm-hmm. Sports Talk morning show, usurping me as the number one person. Now I stand alone at four. It's just me. <laughs> Wallach is nowhere to be seen. Nice. By the way, our new headshots came out just in time for all this crap to happen <laughs> and me not having them. Uh, like my picture's never been used more than it has in the last year. And now they're like, oh, finally, there's a decent picture of you. Yeah, but that won't be used. All right, so uh, Boomer Esiason, they're probably, I'm guessing, the only East Coast morning show that's at Radio Row. And I don't think that's, I don't think I'm wrong. That means they're going on the air at 3 o'clock in the morning live. There's really no reason to be there. The reason Boomer's there, obviously, is he has commitments. And I'm sure, Hardy, that he's got a bunch of commitments you know, like to glad hand at places and things like that. Oh yeah, he. So this poor Geo fella is stuck there, like you know. But you see Boomer in the morning, and it will be like two thirty in the morning, and he'll be in like dressed up with makeup on, cologne. And fresh as a daisy with cologne and gifts for you. Seriously. And then he'll go like, "Fred, you look like ass," and I'll be like, "Yeah, it's two thirty in the morning, in the morning and, I, and I feel horrible." <laughs> like in like, I know Boomer is traveling and staying in different kinds of accommodations. Boomer would be at the Ritz in the penthouse suite. We were at a dump by the airport. I understand how these things work, and I understand he deserves it, but. They're out there. It's 3 in the morning. You get offered a bunch of guests. We've gone through that exercise. A lot of them suck, but Boomer and Geo were like, wow, we got a, a pretty good guest coming up here. Uh, they were very excited to welcome into the show Randy Moss, and that is a legitimate guest, you know, at any point, any time. But as you 
so perfectly put it, Fred, you're not expecting much at 3 o'clock in the morning, Las Vegas time. Um, things did not go as planned, though. Uh, everybody's got something, and that's why I'm actually happy we are not uh, at Radio Row. What is Randy Moss promoting, by the way, Al? Do you, do you know? It's something having to do with horse racing. Really? He's very into horse racing. Are you sure this is the right, this, the... Yeah. Not this the other Randy, Randy Moss, Moss. The wide receiver, not is Randy. Is there another uh, yes. Randy Moss? Is it... <laughs> so already... All right, so they're... Okay, good. They're not on Radio Row, so... Now, I thought they were, like, maybe off-site somewhere. Oh, okay. And not actually on Radio Whatever. Row. Because they're on a set, but I thought maybe they put, uh, a, they put okay. a set together, like, in the hotel somewhere, wherever... Uh, uh, good for them. Boomer probably... Fun. <laughs> yeah, Boomer, yeah. Just like, probably in now his Now we doesn't even have to go to the convention center. Now he just walks downstairs. Do you remember when Francesa did that, when it was yes. in New York? And yes. he was like, I'm only doing it... I'm, I'm not doing it... Yeah. On Radio Row, and no one came to him. <laughs> that was the best. That was the, like, who do you he think you are? He just sat by himself that all up? over again. Yeah, he just sat, <laughs> he might as well have been in his house. Was that was that before or after he started his pay for app, where you had to have the oh, subscription? Oh, oh no, no, he, he was still actually working My, in radio. Mike's on 1099, we're all doing everything over on the app now. Yeah, and say, by the way, <laughs> say what you want about the death of radio, and, you know, like, okay. But I'll tell you this, you're making... A thousand times more money being on terrestrial radio than you are doing anything else with an audio medium. Unless you're Joe Rogan or or four other podcasters. Yeah. There's like there's, there's like, no other way to make money. There's like five people making money in podcasts. No, and, and that's not an exaggeration. If you're a comic, it's great to have one because it helps you immeasurably, but you make your money playing bigger venues. You don't make your money through podcasting. Ask Theo Vaughn. Go ahead. Uh oh. There's an announcer, Randy Moss, who is into horse racing. Who is into horse racing. Please tell me that's fake. That, I, no. That would no. be so awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. no. He said, I saw in the request that Randy would like to talk about, blah, blah, blah. Also, anything NFL related, I'm a, du- I'm a double check that. Or maybe the Randy Moss, who is the sports announcer, or the horse racing announcer. He also he used to work for the NFL yeah. network. Come on. I swear to God. Yes. How's that possible? <laughs> By the way, Al Dukes has to be of a certain age by now. He still sounds very youthful. Yeah, Al but Dukes. Al Dukes been around for a long time. Al Dukes, a good guy. But I will tell you this: is that uh, good for Al Dukes? Even though you're on in New York City and you have a huge star in Boomer Esiason, still trudging through those garbage junk mails to find any loser guest that they offer you on the phone. <laughs> Doesn't that seem odd, though, that Randy Moss would be soliciting via email, like in a email blast to I get on I can't tell you how I ignore every one of those. We don't get offered anyone good anyone more anyway because we screwed with them so much in the past. But, like, it's a, yeah, good on Al. Al Duke's a good guy, and I love those guys. I, I don't know Geo. I love Boomer. But... Good for him just sifting through garbage. I mean, I could come in here every day and read you the idiot, awful guests that we get offered. I mean, I can't imagine anyone. We did it a couple of weeks ago with the guests that we've actually been offered. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, 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 I got three more from yesterday. The, the, the guitar players from bands that you don't even know about that apparently are putting out books or having like a mini tour better, somewhere in the better than what Pacific I get. Northwest. It's better than what I get. <laughs> this, is cool. oh, Jesus. this is horrible. I, this is what Mark Chernoff's talking about. <laughs> you know, you lazy ass. <laughs> this, You're mean, not I, following, doing any follow through. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because we have a great setup and everything is great, but I can't catch a break when it comes to some of this stuff, right? Like, Dua Leap is in New York when we're out here. I think we're getting Randy Moss. We're getting the white Randy Moss. <laughs> I mean, come on! <laughs> I was wondering if he was going to make a hangover-like joke. Wait a second. This Randy Moss is a white. Hold on a second. This is, <laughs> this is not the Randy Moss that we thought we were getting. And they are out in Vegas. You were right, Fred. Yeah. Don't second-guess yourself like that. You had it. You had it right the whole time. Thank Just you. wanted to check to see if you would be interested in current NBC Sports broadcaster and former NFL Network broadcaster and reporter. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he tried too hard. Uh, he, he wanted to justify them being in Vegas, uh, so he sifted through the emails. They wanted a justification. He knew his. This is the because like any good guest is going to go like, yeah, I'll get up at like any time. You can't get a guest at six o'clock in the morning. Anyway, imagine three in the morning. Like good guests generally won't come on until the eight o'clock hour. 
I mean, even guests don't come on Stern now for those interviews. Hachi, Machi, are those good? He, they they come on, but they don't come on till like nine o'clock. They just showed, by the way, on uh, on the CBS Morning News, they were live, like on the plaza out in front of, uh, look like the Bellagio. It's four fifty three a.m. in Las Vegas, and they're going live. No, not and reporter, that's right. That's you not, put the white radio. You put the wrong one, you idiots. First of all, and that I was thinking all. like I was thinking like, there's no way Randy Moss is coming here. <laughs> no wonder they were so excited too. The, the person was like, oh no, he will definitely be there. Oh, my God. In all fairness, this person has got to say, just to be clear, this is not take the top off the defense, Randy Moss. Look, I, oh, this by, is the way, embarrassing. by the way, I do like the broadcaster, Randy Moss. He's a very nice yes. guy. He loves horse racing. Yes. We love horse no, racing with Lee Einsiler. <laughs> you love but horse I, racing? Yeah. Who, who, you, what are you, 100? Would, would you love horse racing? How many people in your life do you know that love horse racing? I have one, and I'm fascinated by him. One. I, uh, well, he's younger guy. than me, and, and, guy, and he loves horse racing. Yep. He loves paramutual betting, and I can't get enough of yep. it. A guy that I used to play golf with uh, used to do it. And then Bob Newmeyer, we all knew Bob. Oh, yeah. And oh. he loved it, but he was, I mean, that that guy was legit. I mean, well, he Bob was. Bob Newbar, like, was a, like, he, like, knew the breeders. And oh, he was. The paddock with the, yeah. Yeah, no, he was hanging was... out with, like, billionaires. Like, yeah. yeah, Bob Newmeyer had his own thing going. Yeah. All right, very quick. We got 30 seconds. I can't wait to have, hear you call them back and say, you know, we're going to have to cancel. No, 100%. I will have no problem because I'll say this is misleading. This is very misleading. And, and you, you can't say <laughs> NFL Network, talk about NFL, NFL, and then you're rolling out a horse racing, Randy Moss? <laughs> how much do so you bad. think covering horse racing in this day and age? Like, how much do you think at the end of the year you are declaring in, in to the IRS? They they bring on guys like Tarico and stuff to do the 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 major events. No no to no. I I am a horse racing guy. Oh, I am oh. the horse racing guy. You don't. You're not even given a W two. There's not enough to have to report. I, I would say that even if you're working for NBC in that capacity, we're talking about under twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, I'm saying under twelve hundred. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, when we come back, I had a friend out at the uh, Radio Row. He's in Las Vegas. He works for a show in Los Angeles, and he said hello to some of our friends. Yes, he did.